Hi, today I will tell you a little, about, little bit about our group function. To show you the group function we have built up a demonstration rig. On this demonstration rig we have uh, two drives for the drive motors so that uh, those two drives can make torque sharing. And then we have uh, one drive what is uh, a bit bigger than the other ones and this is uh, the load drive. Inside this demonstration rig we have three motors. We have the two drive motors here. This is the two torque sharing motors. And then we have the load motor down here. All three motors are mechanically connected with the timing belt. All motors have uh, encoder feedback, all three motors. And the two um, drive motors have also uh, a mechanical brake so that we can show the mechan hoist mechanical brake function with double feedback. Now you see the rig from the other side, and here you can again see that all three motors are connected with the timing belt. We also have placed some discs here um, with a pattern on, so that you can uh, really see that uh, the motors are turning. On the control part, we can uh, start and stop drive 1 and 2. We can uh, force a release on the brake, and we can make a reverse on the drive motors. We can change the speed. The speed on both drives are connected together so that the speed reference is always the same. On the load motor we can start and stop and we can make reverse. And uh, the load drive is in torque mode so here we can adjust how much torque we will provide on the two drive motors. Now I will start the rig and uh, run them. So I will start with the drive motors and to put them in on, turn up the speed and as you can see when you look here and here that they are already torque sharing even though we only have the mechanical losses to carry. Now I will put on the load. So here we start to produce torque and load the two other ones. So now the torque sharing is really nice. The two drive motors have a nominal torque on a little bit above 7 Newton meter, so I can easily put 14 or more than 40 Newton meter and they will still torque share. So here we have a perfect torque sharing. So now if I want to make redundancy and show the, the redundancy, I'll take a little bit down and I will shut down drive number two and then you will see that drive number one will take all the load. So now drive number one is running full load and drive number two is uh, turned off. Auto remote coast. If I turn it on again it will just torque share again. Now I would like to show you full torque. So we put it up to full torque about 7 Newton meter on both drives and then so you can see it's a little bit too much now. I turn it down to zero. And it's still torque sharing. If I turn it up in speed again, it is still torque sharing, even though we have more than 100% torque on the drives. So when we go down, you will see that the torque, when we go down in speed, you will see that the torque is going down also. This is because of the mechanical losses. We only have the mechanical losses if we are rotating, but if we are running zero speed, you can see that some of the losses are reduced, so uh, we'll go a little bit down in, in torque. On the droop function, we have no communication 
to to tell about the torque on the, on the drives between the drives. There's the only common uh, signal we have is the start signal and the speed reference. What you see here is only for the MCT10, and what we have here is that we have taken the DC link and put them together here on the demo rig. So now we are running with a new hoist uh, mechanical brake control with double feedback. This means that now we have load on the load drive and uh, the drive motors are standing still with a mechanical brake uh, closed. So when I open or when I start them now they will open the mechanical brake and then will start running. So you can see that uh, they are working very nice up against uh, the load drive. The torque sharing is still running. To demonstrate the double feedback, I will now force the mechanical brake open on uh, drive number two. And uh, when I now stop the drive, it will, the, uh, the brake will not close. And what will then happen? Yes, if you look here on drive number two, with the forced mechanical brake open, it will show up a warning that there is something wrong with the hoist mechanical brake. But the drive will also continue to maintain the torque. So you will always have torque and zero speed on the drive if the uh, mechanical brake is not closing. That means if you don't get the feedback from closed mechanical brake. So now I want to show you how smooth we can start up against uh, almost full torque. That means we have now um, the load drive to produce a bit more than 10 newton meter, and uh, the two drive motors they are uh, uh, have a, a close brake, so uh, the motor control doesn't know how much torque they have to produce to start up. But even though uh, they are so to speak working in the blind uh, in the beginning, we are. Um, making the P speed PID a little bit more aggressive just in, the f uh, in a few uh, milliseconds to be able to catch the load what, it, uh, what the motor control will see in the same period when the brakes are open. I will start and then you will see that there is no uh, turning back on the backward on the, on the shafts it will just start in the f uh, forward direction and start again and it is full control down to zero speed and now the brakes are coming in. So we have full torque down to zero speed and then the brakes are coming in and when we start it starts to produce a little bit torque and then we are making the PID a little bit more aggressive and then we release the brake and we catch the load very smooth. <laughs> 